Hello again, Storm Nation, and welcome back to Brigham City, Utah. I'm Chad McLean here to answer one of the biggest questions we get all the time here at Storm Products, and that is, what happens to my ball motion if I change weight? Now, I know that there are a lot of equations that go into a single shot in bowling, like coefficient of friction, roll with a slip differential, elastic potential energy, and that's just to name a few. Now, I can stand here and tell you exactly what's happening in the 30,240 square inches of lane material directly behind me, but that would literally take all day, and we only have time for a video that's a few minutes long, so we're only gonna concern ourselves with the things that we can easily observe, like changes in rev rate, speed, launch angle, because these are the things that matter the most to you when you're deciding your next ball and your Storm VIP Pro Shop operator's choice and layout decision for you and your next ball. So let's take a closer look at what we're gonna do today. I've prepared four balls for this test, a 13, 14, 15, and 16 pound physics, all with the same five by three by two layout. Now I'm gonna start this test by finding my best line to the pocket with my normal 15 pound physics. And let the things like speed and rev rate happen naturally without consciously trying to do anything different. Then we'll crunch some numbers and get into some of the details. everyone. Well, that was an interesting test and we got some pretty fascinating results. Now, like I said before, there are a lot of equations that go into just a single shot of bowling that could challenge even the most experienced physics professor. But let's take a closer look at just one of the more relevant formulas and that is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to one half the mass of the object by its velocity squared. So we're only describing a type of magnitude in this up close look. As you can see by this graph, my 15 pound ball at 17.6 miles per hour generated 208 joules of energy. The 16 pound ball, despite being rolled slower, created 217 joules. Going the other direction, my lighter 14 pound ball thrown at 18.3 miles per hour created 212 joules of energy. And lastly, the 13 pound only generated about 200 joules of kinetic energy. As we look at this other graph, at 15 pounds, my ball speed matches my rev rate. I'm not locked into a certain category of core, surface, or layout. I can use pretty much any type of ball with any layout and get good results. So at 15 pounds, my speed was 17.6 miles per hour and about 490 revs. But when I went up to 16 pounds, my speed dropped to half a mile an hour and my revs dropped to about 480. Not a big jump, but that one half mile per hour was enough to bump me over into the rev dominant category with the slower ball speed. I had to move in deeper with a steeper launch angle to get the ball to read the lane properly. Going the other direction of 14 pounds, my speed went up one mile per hour, which is actually a lot more than you might think. And my revs increased to about 515. But because the speed went up so much, this forced me back right with much less launch angle because I'm now in the speed dominant category. Now this last ball was unique and quite a big drop down in weight for me. At 13 pounds, my rev rate jumped dramatically up to about 550, but my speed only went up two tenths of a mile an hour. This is because my ball speed comes from mostly my legs, not my arm. So just because the ball is lighter, that doesn't mean my feet are gonna go any faster, but my arm and hand don't have to work as hard to manipulate the ball, which explains why my revs went up so much, but only a fraction in speed from the 14 pound ball. This definitely put me back into the rev dominant category and forced me back left with more launch angle and a deeper set down. All right, so if you need to go down a pound of weight because of a strain on your elbow or wrist, you should, worry-free. You're not gonna notice that much of a difference in carry. Now, if you're chucking a 15-pound ball down the lane, you might wanna consider going up to a 16-pound ball to drop your speed down a couple notches to match your rev rate. That's just gonna open up a whole nother world of possibilities in your arsenal and layout selection. But I have a fun idea for a pretty fun test that we can better illustrate out in the real world, so let's get out of here. All right, everyone, so we just got done conducting our kinetic energy experiment back at the Storm Test Facility. Now we're gonna try our hand at something a little different that we haven't normally done before. So I've enlisted the help of my good friend, Kendall Miles. I didn't tell him the, what this test was all about today because he probably would have otherwise said no. <laughs> so here's what's gonna happen. We're here to see how much kinetic energy it takes to launch Kendall a certain distance and try and relate it to bowling somehow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start running at him a little bit slow, a little faster, 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 until I'm hitting them full speed. And we're gonna measure how much kinetic energy I imparted upon uh, Kendall here and then see how far we launched him. So let's jump right in.
in this first run, I covered five yards in roughly three seconds, which is about three and a half miles per hour. So at 185 pounds, I created right at 100 joules of kinetic energy, sending Kindle about two and a half yards. For this one, I hit Kindle at about 10 miles per hour, creating 838 joules of kinetic energy, launching him over five yards. This last hit was right at 15 miles per hour, sending Kindle over eight yards at a staggering 1,800 joules of kinetic energy. Alrighty, everyone, remember that even if you have to go down a pound in weight, you aren't gonna lose that much in carry, if anything at all, because you're making up for it in the increase in speed and rev rate. So no matter what weight you use, how fast you throw it, or how many revs you're packing, get out there and bowl up the storm, Stormation.